Did you guys ever see that episode of Frasier where uh, Daphne makes British food for breakfast and it just so happened to coincide with a very uncomfortable moment uh, between uh, Frasier's father and a woman that Frasier's father had just started to see? Oh. Hilarious. I mean, hilarious episode. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that British food is hilarious. I mean, bangers and mash? I, I guess. I don't, I, I've never... Well, I guess no, I have had it. Ponzi made it once, which I'm sure is not uh, like, you know, completely authentic as it would be if we were having bangers and mash somewhere in Britain. But seeing as neither one of us has been to Britain yet, we've talked about possibly doing a tech conference over there, doing a, a gnome dex in the UK. What do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? We'll fill up on bangers and mash and uh, be good to go. Maybe some shepherd's pie. All right, I got a, uh, keeping in the, the thread of uh, talking about food from all around the world, asking where all my geeks are from, James Briggs sent me this. He says, hey, Chris, I have a nice roundup of good old British food for you. Number one, jams and marmalades. A sweet preserve made from fruit, often strawberries or oranges, though there are a lot of unusual types, such as my favorite, strawberry and chili is often served on plain white bread with thick crusts and is thickly spread onto the bread. Making jams and marmalades is also a common part of the British summer, as many people grow their own fruits and make their own preserves, me included. And personally, I have found jams and marmalades to be like a fine wine. The longer you leave it, the better it becomes, until you hit that magic year where it is just right, though this does not work with store-bought jams. And wasn't it uh, Paddington who was addicted to marmalade? Um, he was also addicted to Pac-Man. That episode actually never aired. Two, bangers and mash. Bangers and mash is nice and simple English meal. It is a good plate of mashed potatoes and a few sausages chucked in, and it all is just covered in sloppings of gravy. I love that word related to food. Sloppings. <sighs> Number three, bubble and squeak. Are you making this stuff up? Is this for real? Bubble and squeak? Typically made from cold vegetables that have been left over from a previous meal, often the Sunday roast. The chief ingredients are potato and cabbage, but carrots, peas, Brussels sprouts, and other vegetables can be added. The cold chopped vegetables and cold chopped meat, if used, are fried in a pan together with mashed potato until the mixture is well cooked and brown on the sides. The name of is a description of the action and sound made during the cooking process. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Number four, fish and chips. Mmm, fish cod, haddock, hus, place, palace. I've had cod. Cod is one of my favorite cooked fishes, by the way. Deep fried in flour batter with chips, fried potatoes, dressed in malt vinegar. This is England's traditional takeaway food, or as U.S. would say, to go. Fish and chips are not normally home cooked, but bought at a fish and chip shop, a chippy, to eat on premises or as a takeaway. The fish can also be changed for a saveloy, a type of red sausage heavily seasoned, and is often served with large amounts of tomato sauce. Number five, the Yorkshire pudding. This dish is not usually eaten as a dessert like other puddings, but instead as a part of the main course or as a starter. Yorkshire pudding made from flour, eggs, and milk is a sort of batter baked in the oven and usually moistened with gravy. The traditional way to eat a Yorkshire pudding is to have a large flat one filled with gravy, and vegetables as a starter of the meal. Then the meal is when the meal is over, any unused pudding should be served with jam or ice cream as a dessert. Then the last one is the Sunday roast. This is the cornerstone of the British Empire. <laughs> often eaten, I wasn't laughing at the British Empire, it just kind of struck me as funny. Uh, often eaten as a whole family, including aunts, uncles, and other close relatives, is also known as a carvery. The general foods with it are some sort of roasted meat, often beef, chicken, lamb, or pork, roasted potatoes, peas, carrots, the Yorkshire pudding, and other vegetables, and always including the Brussels sprout. Even though very few people do like the sprout, it is still part of the Sunday roast. Why, you may ask? Well, I don't know. Wikipedia didn't know, and no one does. It's just a part of the roast and always will be. It's kind of funny. Uh, so I'm curious to know, why is the Brussels sprout a part of the Sunday roast? Someone's got to know, and if, if Wikipedia doesn't know, I mean, can anybody really know? Maybe, maybe, um, I, I don't know, I'm, not, I'm just not a fan of, of, of Brussels sprouts or, or peas or, or cooked carrots. I would have a horrible time 
in England, I think, eating. I like the fish and chips. I could probably stick with that. Mmm, that does sound kind of good right now. What do you think? Anyway, uh, as I've requested before, uh, if, if we haven't already done a video on the food that you eat, where you're from, maybe originally, maybe where you're living now, where you, you, you know, hope to go to someday, what is the local flavor? What is the cuisine? So that when I travel there, at least I've, I've made reference to what I might want to eat when I go there. And I know that you're tuning in from all over the galaxy, so, you know, send me your food. Well, not physically shipping me your food, but I mean, send me descriptions for your food, and I'd like to be able to share it with the rest of the community. My email address is chris at perillo.com. Every once in a while, you'll see me eating a fine American cuisine of uh, uh, protein bars and uh, coffee. That's, that's what I eat. Pizza, too. I do that. Whatever Ponzi makes is really what I eat. No matter, uh, you're welcome to stop by our website where we're typically talking tech. We're exchanging tips and tricks, but I like learning more about you, um, you know, beyond just the computer that you have or the computer questions that you have. Uh, you are welcome to stop by the website so long as you are a friendly chap. See, I, there you go. Friendly chat, that was that was my best uh, impression of someone from England. I I don't I don't know. I I I'm I'm really I, I'm stretching now. No matter, the chat room's open twenty four hours a day, seven days a week at live.perillo.com. We'll eat you later.